thank you for joining us today uh, uh, i am shakti i am the co-founder of anupras uh, anupras okay. This is a social organization and, and we are working to make public infrastructure accessible for people with disability. And this is our new initiative where we are covering success stories of uh, you know people uh, from the community uh, who have done well and achieved in life. So thank you so much for joining us today and we welcome you here. Uh, to And to start off with, I would, I would want you to introduce yourself and give us a brief in introduction to the audience. Uh, basically, I'm a para badminton player. So I have represented uh, India. So I got uh, three medals, uh, one silver and two bronze so far. So uh, it's been a two, two and a half years journey in my para badminton career. So I just started uh, from 2020. Uh, before that, uh, I was doing gym and everything. The so, moment uh, only my uh, gym coach is uh, like he pushed me to this. Uh, uh, para badminton uh, scope so before that uh, basically i have a uh, disability it's is uh, muscular dystrophy that is uh, facio scapular humeral dystrophy so i got diagnosed in the year of 2013 so it's been 10 years uh, actually basically my, what is muscular dystrophy is will uh, the muscle will gradually got reduced and uh, eventually it got stink and it it will uh, lose its functions so this is the muscular dystrophy. So initial stage of my diagnosis, uh, I don't realize the effect, uh, the causes of the muscular dystrophy. So eventually after year by year, maybe after uh, five years after the diagnosis, I got to know it's a severe uh, disease to have. So uh, like uh, I went through some uh, depressions and I, I'm, not, I'm not playing any sports. So before uh, before my schooling, I was playing uh, all the sports. I was a hockey player, like in a normal uh, able body sports, I was a hockey player. And I was doing yoga and I'm attending a yoga, yoga championship, everything. Uh, so after I got diagnosed with this, uh, I just stopped everything. Uh, I, I, I don't have any trust. I don't have any belief. So I, I went through some depression for some few years. And then I came uh, wherever I left, uh, I should start uh, again. So I left it in my sports. So I need to get it back from my sports itself. So I started the para sports 2020. So um, you don't have much uh, opportunities in uh, uh, getting the uh, uh, support and uh, coaching facilities, everything. So like uh, later by later, because uh, we can't complain, uh, many people don't have the awareness of their disability and they, they can easily train the normal people. They can't train uh, the uh, disabled people. So uh, it took time to get uh, trained and uh, the later I just attended randomly, I just gave, gave, gave a try to the state matches. Mm -hmm. And then I realized after the first victory, I realized I had some opportunities. Then I went for a nationals and uh, finally internationals. And I made some medals. Well, that, uh, that's uh, good to hear. Uh, Neeraj, tell us something about your childhood. Tell us something about your background first. So how was your childhood like? Basically, in my family, my father, my mother and my sister. She's elder one. So I was, I, I lived a normal uh, life uh, as a like, non-disabled person uh, till my age of uh, up to 18. So um, I don't have any issues on schooling. I don't have any accessibility issue. I don't have any awareness about disability. So this is how my schooling went uh, up to like uh, 12 standard. After my 12 standard, I get no diagnosed with this. So I, I don't I don't mind about this. Uh, so I don't I don't have any awareness about it. So I took a bachelor of architecture uh, as a career, uh, five years course. So it took a lot of uh, physical push uh, in the college, and we have to uh, go to the site and we have to uh, travel a lot. So it, it requires a lot of uh, uh, energy for physically uh, uh, this that course. So uh, this is how uh, childhood and the, the college days went off. And uh, later I just uh, changed my career architecture to IT. So because uh, it will be more convenient for me. And IT uh, companies are more accessible uh, comparing to other architectural firms. So mm -hmm. I choose uh, IT. So I learned about some few uh, uh, applications and now I'm in IT. Okay. Uh, so as you had a very normal childhood and this particular uh, condition happened to you at the age of 18. So as, as you were talking in your introduction also uh, that you went through some depression and then you had to come back. So uh, uh, how did you deal with that, uh, come out of it? Apart from sports, uh, I understand that sports is a great motivation for you. Um, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, this is not like a normal disable, uh, disability. So other disability will happen in uh, the, just one moment. So my disability will happen gradually. So uh, I never had that one moment 
uh, to realize this is my disability this is going to be a disability i i never knew that so every day my uh, uh, hidden muscles uh, will get uh, lost so i don't i don't know uh, which is getting lost today and which is getting lost tomorrow at the age of 18 uh, i get to realize okay fine this is going to happen uh, for the next five years so after losing more muscles only i get realize that so uh, hmm. like yeah like uh, i went to some counseling uh, like um, from uh, medical experts and uh, fine i i was doing gym and uh, with my minimum mobility i was traveling a lot uh, my family supported me a lot uh, without family support we can't uh, push ourselves uh, we'll eventually get into the uh, trouble of uh, um and only with family support and i was fortunately had a good friends with me uh, during mm-hmm. my college days and uh, they supported me and they didn't uh, made me feel bad of my disability uh, they were just taking care of it was easy for me to get uh, come from the depression like uh, it's it's completely because of my uh, surroundings and uh, uh, the people around me okay uh, so how did uh, you know para badminton happen uh, your uh, gym trainers you know motivated you and you went back to sports from there going to you know represent india you have gone to uganda you have represented india a couple of times you have won medals for india so uh, how did that whole journey take place i need to some start some para sports i don't know which para sports i'm going to choose so uh, all my mm-hmm. friends are going to play badminton near by the coach academy so i just wanted to mm-hmm. go there to play with them i couldn't able to stand and play so i started with that uh, like uh, they just motivated you are just playing well other comparing to uh, like normal uh, like friends so uh, okay let's start this career as a para badminton uh, i'm not sure where i'm going to start uh, i just randomly went to one uh, nearby academy and uh, there there is a coach he told you can come you can join play but uh, mm-hmm. later uh, they could not focus as much as uh, the norm- they can normal uh, students uh yes. i could i could see the differentiation but uh, that we have to accept it uh, they don't have a, it's completely commercial and everything is going on so uh, initial stage of my para badminton i don't have any support for coaching fees uh, for my kit uh, for mm-hmm. my shuttles and kit bag and the main problem is i have to travel from my home and to the academy and the academy mm-hmm. should be accessible uh, the everything should be ramp facilitated everything should be there uh it was not there completely so every time i required some uh, friend support and the coach has to come um hmm. so this was my uh, first 6 months of my para badminton so uh, to play for 10 minutes uh, i will be waiting in the academy for 2 hours i will just simply sitting in the academy others will be playing i can't hmm. even play because i don't have a sports wheelchair initially uh, for badminton we need a sports wheelchair that is minimum cost of 40000 Uh, I I don't have a job at that time also, so I couldn't afford the sports wheelchair, and mm-hmm. I and I won't want to uh, force my parents to get that uh, because uh, I have a problem in my uh, career choosing also, so I don't want to force them uh, to get me the wheelchair. I have lived in the locality of Chitlapakam, though uh, that person like they have a foundation, they have a uh, in, it's an NGO, they have uh, supported me to get the forty uh, thousand of wheelchair. Mm-hmm. So I just moved to other court, and uh, that luckily I got a good coach. um hmm. to focus only on me i uh, had a one week of training before my state uh, tournament uh, with a wheelchair so uh, actually to be true uh, in state level we don't have much uh, participants in the uh, para badminton so very hmm. less uh, players will come uh, because everyone has to has to face these uh, struggles yeah. and need to comes to this so then yeah. uh, people will be there in uh, wheelchair category in other hmm. category like standing uh, like hand uh, issues like other categories uh, people will be more they can easily accessible like few things uh, we wheelchair players we could not so after that uh, uh, i just want to push it to the nationals um, the the tamil nadu for association supported like they have pushed me to the nationals and uh, mm. suddenly i got an invite for uh, uh, international tournaments also so that mm. cost was almost 2 uh, uh, lakhs uh, for traveling uh, i was uh, uh, qualified for that uh, tournament but i could not afford for the uh the the fees uh, the travel expenses everything so these international tournaments government own sponsor us initially uh, they, we can we can just reimbursement uh, a partial of amount after going to the tournament only so initially so, i just hmm. created a crowdfunding and some unknown people's uh, like i don't know uh, i was blessed to get that uh, i'm not sure I, i was randomly putting i know i will not get that but luckily i got the amount and i went to the tournament and i was hmm. very serious uh, this is my first tournament and this is not my money Uh, it's completely my society money they supported me uh, like unfortunately uh, i got uh, the, the bronze medal so that the life completely changed 
uh, the way uh, the people and the surrounding friends family they got uh, they, they had a trust on me so uh, before that whatever i say uh, they they will say they, they won't trust us you are wasting your time uh, you are doing this why you are doing this you, you could have focus you could have invested this money in your career or you could have do something else uh, productively mm. uh, mm. and after that after the victory everyone got to realize about this uh, only few supported uh, yeah like after that eventually uh, 2021 i went to uganda para badminton and uh, 2022 i went again uganda and indonesia so mm-hmm. in 2022 i got a silver and bronze uh, 21 i got a bronze so uh, this year i went to nationals and uh, uh, i couldn't afford uh, much for the international tournament so i'm looking for it so hopefully i will go so, great, great to know that like uh, like you talk in your journey uh, this is also a hard fact that uh, in india still we don't have that kind of a support when it comes to uh, you know para athletes yes. you know travel and uh, the training and the facilities so um, i understand where you know the concern comes when parents say that you have you, you should focus on another career but now you are also a techie uh, you know you're a tech guy you're also working so tell us something about your career how are you building it uh, the best thing is i got the job because of my para badminton so, uh, shifting from the architecture career to it career it's not a, it's not easy and i don't have much uh, knowledge about in initial days i don't have much knowledge about it so they uh, in interview yes. uh, talking about my para badminton career and they got impressed and because of that only i got that i was lucky about that I, I, not everyone will get that opportunity this is how it goes so so you are parallelly you know fueling your passion as well as working uh, you know uh, as a regular it guy that's that's so great to know apart from sports uh, what are your other passions what do you you know do in your free time when you're not playing or working yeah i would like to travel a lot Uh, mostly i will choose um, accessible places uh, in and around the, our ca- country so i like to travel at least for three months once i'm traveling uh, with my family oh, okay. I, i definitely i will plan for that uh, for at least for three months once this is this so, is my course that experience uh, you know traveling uh, in india so how, how is that experience uh, yeah we don't uh, get accessible uh, places everywhere it's very uh, few places we have to choose and even mm-hmm. that if it is, they mention it as accessible uh, the ramp won't be a normal one it will be a it won't be in a proper ratio so so uh, it will be difficult for me and without my family my mom my mom sister uh, like uh, it won't uh, possible for me to travel uh, everywhere so i i, I drive a car uh, so it's accessible for me nice uh, to know that like so, in our session we always ask people uh, some lighter questions uh, like so no, are you a movie buff or do you like reading books uh, I'm, so- i'm a movie buff i don't uh, prefer books always like uh, like i'm not sure uh, why i'm not into the books much uh, i prefer learning with uh, humans i prefer uh, en- engaging with the humans uh, more than books I, i think i don't have a passion on the, uh, reading the books and i don't have patience also Uh, it is so, fair enough yeah those <laughs> yeah. movies with uh, feel good comedy um, not much crime and all uh, just feel good comedy fun <laughs> so uh, nirash coming back to you know our field uh, what would be one advice that you would want to give to anybody uh, any child who is in a similar age or maybe facing a you know similar condition right now going through a, a transaction like you did over four to five years well, what do you think is one advice that you would want to pass on that you think should, somebody must have you know given you or it might have helped yeah what the disability is uh, if it is a 10% or even a 99% of disability uh, they could choose any sport because if if it is completely disabled also we have a sports called boshia so uh, whatever the disability is uh, we can play the sports that's my advice always okay that that's that's great where do you see yourself you know growing five years down the line or what is one thing that you would want to achieve okay um initially i had many goals to getting a paralympic medal and everything and later uh, after getting all the thing once uh, se- the setting of the goal itself uh, i don't feel it's it's a myth um, sometimes we we go for the goal and after mm-hmm. reaching the goal we feel uh, there is nothing okay we, after reaching okay fine what is next what is next it goes like that so yes. uh, it's uh, it's not like uh, uh, it's satisfaction is the best success uh, i feel like that uh, a self satisfaction should be there whatever you do uh, you have to be satisfied with what you are doing it so uh, it's not getting the goal and um, my goal is to be uh, it's not like getting a medal i need to play always get all this from the next 10 years or so i should not lose anything from this 
I think that's very wise to you know talk about and it's true that when we go behind goals once we achieve then we start looking at next so it is very important to enjoy the process as well yeah. uh, in the same light one thing you think it, it can be positive and it can be in any kind of a scenario not just disability uh, when we talk about our nation um, what what do you think you know other two or three things that we need to change as a nation going forward maybe in 5 10 years for me uh, as a disabled person i required accessibility everywhere uh, even uh, if, if they can uh, if 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 covid comes if they can uh, put a rule to get uh, the mask sanitation to be everywhere in the shops and every 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 commercial store everywhere uh, if they put a rule uh, and the same government should put a rule for the accessibility for all the disabled per- person even if it is small shop big big shop like whatever the complete place it's public transport everywhere they should be, they should give a accessible uh, uh, government should do this uh, but it definitely takes time uh, we are a developing country so uh, like comparing uh, 10 years before now we are much accessibility uh, like we, we get accessibility in mall and other other places cinema theaters also so we need more places talking like talking about that. accessibility now i think 10 years before there was no talk about accessibility <laughs> yes exactly so we should be proud of uh, our evolving evolving uh, thing so definitely it will happen so uh, we have to create more awareness on this So Neeraj, we are so so happy to have you here today, and thank you so much for you know joining us and taking taking time out to do, doing this interview with us. Thank you very much for uh, inviting uh, the para players and uh, uh, do more uh, like sessions like this. So we will get more uh, more stories of inspiring stories from everyone, and I'm looking forward that. Uh, and you are already doing a great uh, job in Anupriya. I'm just following you in Instagram everywhere. So it's very great to see. thank you we are just we we have just started as a small step and we are also trying to do what we can and with aim with this series is also to reach out to more people more on the sense of awareness because until and unless we start to talk about both the success stories and the challenges i think both, both things are very very important yes, and exactly. to change the mindset of the society specifically towards you know uh, you know disability and people with disability so thank you so much for doing this here